the Fed is now in a very difficult situation because you look at the 10 years treasury bond yield, it's a three and a half percent plus minus and inflation is six percent. And there's a stress in the financial system, certainly with regional banks. So what should the Fed do? In theory, the Fed should continue to increase interest rates until they are significantly above the rate of inflation. Hmm. But if they do that, the system collapses. So it's <laughs> not a very desirable option. I don't know what Powell will do. My sense is uh, he will move slowly, but if problems occur, then they'll flood the system again with liquidity. You know, we have a lot of volatility in individual stocks and individual commodities, but the long cycles, they take time and uh, they move in slow motion. In other words, we have rising interest rates from the Second World War until 1981, then falling interest rates. Of course, they were artificially uh, then kept low until August uh, 2020. And now I think we are in an inflationary cycle because we start the cycle with a record amount of deficits and debts. And uh, the way I see it, uh, the political parties are not eager to de reduce the deficits. The Republicans spend on weapons and uh, corruption. The Democrats <laughs> uh, spend on transfer payments uh, to themselves and corruption. So both are about equal. It's a uniparty and both will not do anything about the deficits because to do a, something about the deficits would be to go to people and tell them you have to pay more tax or you get less money from us, the government, in terms of social security, in terms of subsidies and so forth. And society today is a society of woke people. They don't want to bear or take sacrifices up on themselves. They all think that they are victims of something and that they deserve reparation payment. I also deserve reparation payment because I was born in Switzerland and we had to fight the evil Austrians to get our freedom. So the Austrians should pay us reparations. A cryptocurrency controlled by the government is a present from heaven to essentially control uh, transactions, your transaction, my transactions and so forth. Uh, I don't think it will take off because we will go back to barter systems or in a village we can introduce our own money. It will be counterfeited, but we can introduce our own money. The central government will then in and probably prohibit that. But, uh, you know, I don't think people want to, will tolerate to be monitored about everything they do. It's right. a, if I go out at night, I pay cash, so nobody knows anything. I believe uh, strongly that we are moving into a totalitarian state. Now, I don't know whether the future dictator or ruler or king or emperor or what not, or president of the World Economic Forum, whether he's a socialist, communist or a fascist, but it won't matter very much in character, he will be an authoritarian, uneducated clown that belongs to the bureaucracy. In former times, we had autocratic regimes under kings and the feudals and rulers. And now we have the same under the bureaucrats, except the bureaucrats is the worst kind of mob. They are uneducated, uh, they're not legitimately uh, there where they are in their position of power, and they will always abstain from any responsibility. So Same. I will never do anything the government tells me, because uh, let's face it, the government does not represent the people, they represent themselves. Just look at President Biden and Kamala Harris. What do you think they care about people? I always have the same allocation, real estate, stocks, bonds, cash, and of course, precious metals. And so the precious metals as a percent of total assets has done well and has increased in value. But it's not that when I see that gold goes up, that I would sell all my stocks and sell all my bonds and cash and put it all into gold. 
I may increase the position in precious metals, but uh, I have already a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel it's uh, it's better not to overdo things because we don't know what uh, the problem is. You and I can analyze the gold market or the silver market or platinum, but you and I, we don't know what the government will do next. They can ask people to do it for them like they can ask uh, some banks to kind of manipulate the price, uh, which they've done. I have friends who seem to know that they have, that the prices have been manipulated. Doesn't help in the long run on the country. In the long run, manipulation breaks and then prices move strongly. And we may be at uh, this point at the present time where maybe precious metals have a good move. But I'm not going to increase the position in gold and silver because I already have enough. Look, it could be 2,800 or it could be 4,000 or 6,000. I believe that this year, as they have always done, the Federal Reserve will cave in. Because uh, if you analyze very carefully, once you embark on printing money, as they did in December 2008. That was the announcement by Mr. Bern ben Bernanke, another of these bureaucratic geniuses that never has worked in a business in his life, has no business experience, has never conversed with ordinary people on the street. He's an academic moron. You understand? He's mm -hmm. went to fine universities and read some books and so forth. Most of them uh, he didn't read. He didn't read the classical economists. And if he read them, he didn't understand them. Or else he's a communist. You understand? Mm -hmm. The communists, they want to control the system. They want the planned economy. And the central bank is a wonderful instrument how to control the economy and the allocation of capital. The last time they bought the kind of quantity of gold they're buying now is in the late 50s and 60s, which preceded the 1971 closure of the gold window in America in August 71. And uh, following that, the gold price went ballistic. So I would take this as an important signal. But I would also take this as an important signal that finally, I mean, it's difficult to, to believe that governments would smarten up. But governments in India and in uh, Russia and in China and in Brazil and so forth, they have second thoughts about holding all their money, their monetary reserves in dollars, because they saw how the U.S. essentially froze the assets of the poor Afghani people who are, mm -hmm. some of them are starving. But the US, they go and give conferences about human rights. At the same time, they let the uh, Afghani people starve. That wow. is the hypocrisy of America. Talk big and do the worst kind of things onto the world. There's one trend that I think is important to understand. It seems that uh, some forces in the US, uh, some call it the deep state and some people call it whoever it is, but they are out to destroy the cities. And uh, obviously when you want to destroy a city like Chicago, then wealthy people move out and then the people who remain, they will have to contend with either higher taxation or with more unpleasant living conditions like stores will close down and this and that. And when stores close down, uh, the problem is that the thieves have less opportunity. So the, the theft will then be concentrated on your neighborhood. <laughs> it, it means that essentially properties in the countryside may be desirable. I mean, when you when you think about it, assuming you were to live in Chicago and you have a family and uh, all the time there are some people that uh, pester you and uh, threaten you, then one day you say to yourself, why do I still live here? I go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the countryside in Montana or in Utah or wherever. And so I think that the real estate in cities will not be very desirable and that commercial properties will be bad. That's why I think this commercial, this uh, regional banking problem is actually a bigger problem than is perceived by the market. So the outlook for equities is not particularly good. The outlook for properties is not particularly good. And uh, the outlook for 
say gun manufacturers is probably quite good because at some point in your 